Welcome to the show. Today, we are converting lead-acid batteries to eco-lithium 105 amp hours in our 2017 club car precedent. Some of the tools you might need for this job includes a uh, set of uh, sockets. Uh, this is a uh, 3 8 inch drive. You also will definitely need a Torx uh, set. Uh, T15, T30, T40 are needed. Here's some uh, zip ties for some cable management, electrical tape. There's some quarter inch spades that are used for uh, connections, such as in the ignition area where this key is and stuff. Some various screwdrivers, some uh, diagonal cutters, and a uh, crimping uh, stripping tool. In addition to uh, various tools, you'll need some safety uh, things since you are dealing with lead acid batteries such as uh, gloves and possibly some eye protection. Also, if you're going to wash out the battery compartment due to previous acid spills, you may get a uh, good rust leak in your driveway. So you might want to wash the battery compartment in some area, whether it be gravel or on your lawn or something where it can tolerate rust. Um, driveways can be very bad. Additional safety items. Ensure that your key is either in the off position or remove it. Also ensure that your controller is in the tow position and not in the run position. We will move it to the run position as our last step after the battery has been installed and connected. It's down there somewhere with a snake. While tidying up the uh, battery compartment for y'all, um, I guess my visitor, the snake, didn't appreciate the noise and or 150 mile an hour gust from my leaf blower. So he's uh, just saying goodbye, y'all. Bye, Mr. Snake. Releasing the snake. Ah! Woo! Woo! That was very good of you, boo. You're sort of into this. I've had a little practice. Animal. I've had practice with him for the last couple minutes. Animal capturing. So. He's going to suffocate in there. Well, I'm just going to walk down the street and throw it in somebody's backyard. All right, step one is run the blower to get rid of all the stuff that the mice put in here and eradicate the snake. Step two, which I did release down the street, so now the neighbor has a new uh, my mouse fighting uh, weapon, right? Um, it might have been a rattleless rattlesnake uh, based on Amy's uh, fine, fine research. So it's a good thing I didn't get bitten. So this is the current state of my dead batteries and what my next step is to remove them. So that's what we're gonna do, remove batteries. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the positive lead and the negative lead from the golf cart. Um, and then we can individually do each battery plus the hold down clamp. So first of all, this is the positive. You can see with the wire there, plus it says positive right there. So. I like to go ahead and remove that stuff first. I'm using a half inch uh, deep socket. Um, loosen him up nicely. Let's go ahead and do the negative. And this is on the opposite side. This is, in my case, it's on the uh, driver's side. Here's the um, here's the wire leading to the golf cart. So we're just gonna unloosen him and he'll come off easily too. And we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. So the first bracket is this one. You're going to need a 5 8 inch wrench, or excuse me, a, a 5 8 inch socket or a 16 millimeter socket, right? But in this case, he's broken, so he just comes right up. Um, I'm guessing the acid ate it up. The rod's down there somewhere. Over here, this one's still intact, so we'll need to remove him the hard, the old-fashioned way, right? So I'm just using the half inch drive with a 5 8 inch socket, deep socket. He still has the rod in place. 
doesn't want to budge. Still doesn't want to budge. Might need a friend. We'll be back. Is this authorized by the manufacturer? What manufacturer? Of the batteries. What battery? Do we need that thing to hold the new one in place? I don't know. We'll find out. You basically need a crowbar, large screwdriver, something that can pry this out. I don't have any of that handy right now. So this is the next little thing. Um, I don't know if I need this to hold down the new battery. So I'm not going to destroy it or the existing batteries, obviously. But we got a little wiggle room now. Don't do this at home. Is it screwed in below? Well, they probably have a screw in down there, but the screw on here should have loosened it up. All right, we got this bugger off. You can see uh, how corroded he is. And uh, down there is his rod here. Um, I basically just beat him to death with that guy. Try to spin him gently, turning the rod, all kinds of stuff. Couldn't do it. He's held in place at the very bottom down there um, with some sort of like a hook thing that hooks onto the bottom somewhere. So I couldn't pull him up. So if you can't pull him up, bash him down, which is what I did. And uh, you see what happened. And now that's the results. So now we can uh, proceed to uh, remove the batteries. These are the old batteries, three of them. Those are the other three. Bye-bye. All right, the batteries are out. You can see I got a little bit of crud down there in this one compartment. Um, over here, it's not as bad. Um, I rinse it out as kind of like an intermediate step just to, so I wasn't dealing with such gross acid everywhere when I was pulling these things out. You'll see that each side of the battery, there's one, and here's the other one. They've got little slots, which works great to put straps in. When you uh, use straps, it makes it a little easier to pull these things up since there's no handles. All right, we got ourselves some uh, baking soda to help neutralize the acid. The water will help dilute the acid, but it won't to completely remove it. Baking soda will help neutralize it, and then we can rinse it all away and make sure it's all dry before we uh, put the new one in. So let's get this going. All right, this entire battery compartment is plastic with the exception of the uh, motor controller right there, which is metal. Luckily, it's not sealed, but at least it does have a splash um, proof or whatever thing. So try not to get it too wet because that's not good if it gets inside. But other than that, this all can tolerate water for the most part. It's got a bunch of drain holes. A lot of stuff was just clogged with just garbage, you know, from the batteries. So it's all cleaned up now. So I'm going to let this stuff dry um, and just finish rinsing. Ultimately, I'm going to have to rinse and maybe paint the frame underneath the golf cart. And that'll be a different video on a different day. But for today, we just want to go ahead and get this guy cleaned up, neutralize the acid, that type of stuff, and get the new uh, battery going. So, uh... We're back after this thing dries. Poor Flash has been gutted. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Wow, that's the new battery. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Eco battery. Yeah. Powering the future. Powering Flash. See, the thing is, you go through. You, you go through. You have to hook it and pull it up. As long as you hold it, hold it with one person holding the bottom, you can get the other thing down. That's how it's working. Screw it. You have a little nut or something on top, I guess, screw down on it. So I'm thinking with this, what's not to have maybe temporarily get this thing working. Maybe we have to slide it, slide the battery over that way. Yeah. Yeah. Not too much. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see the. Okay. I right. think it was good where it was at. We were just trying to get that. Well, you just you need room. I wonder if, uh, if we could uh, if I could pick it up and hold it. Is it long enough to where you can hold the rod and I can hold the battery? Lord, that's, that's close. 
that another question is, and there's no way I can do it from the bottom because it's just way too short. I took the uh, battery out and I'm going to reseat it. The problem is when I first put it in, we didn't really have a clue as to what was going on. And you see this guy here? He's about two inches above the rest of this, right? So he was causing the battery to be at an angle and flip-flop all kinds. None of the other videos I saw on this even mentioned that. Um, you can hang your, your, um, your hook there or here. You can have it facing one way or the other. Buys you about an extra half inch of room. So I'm going to do things a little different this time. Um, I'm going to, if you can see, I'll just, I'm going to go ahead and go that route because it'll buy me an extra half inch. Plus it shifts the battery over there a little bit. We're right here. Um, it wasn't resting totally over here. It was like going off to the side, like over here, which is crazy. And I'm, the extra couple of inches will shift it there. So we'll see how this second time goes, okay? But it definitely wasn't secure. All right, we just reseated the battery. The um, thing up here is a little bit better. Um, it wasn't that high before. If you look really closely here, we were resting before on on this guy, which is about two inches above the floor. Now he's not, he's got plenty of room. Really nothing over here to hit on. He's got support here. Unlike last time, there's just, that battery ain't going nowhere, which is the main goal. Before it was atrocious. So if it looks like the Titanic, you may just need to reseat it. Surprise tool of the day, garage jack. Uh, when we reseed the battery, it was easier just to jack the thing up and get the uh, hanger uh, clamp down thingy bopper from the bottom that just made it a lot easier I mean, we didn't have clearance with this bad boy we did have clearance all right we pulled the uh, seat which is pretty easy just pull straight up you don't need to do any bolts or anything yay uh, on top of the this area here right that guy right there there's two t30 bolts or screws they need to come out you're gonna need t30 and t40s I'm using one on my Craftsman wrench here. Um, pretty easy. Otherwise, if you got screwdrivers, that works too. On the floor, there's two screws or bolts. These are like, I'm sorry, one there and one there. Somewhere around there. Yeah, over here, over here, wherever. There are T40s and there's two on the other side too. I already took them out. Once you pop those guys out, we're going to pop this uh, charging port, this little plastic clip here on the outside. I already pried it with a screwdriver. Should come right out if it wants to. Yay. Didn't break. So he's off. Yay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and now that we've got the, we have this off. What happened was I already got ahead of you a little bit. I took a screwdriver and I pried the, um, molding here the trim i did the same thing on the other side and then you can start pulling the uh this uh, floor mat out when you pull the floor mat out over here there's a total of three screws that got to come out um they're up against this black trim here so there's one right there uh, close to me one here in the middle and then one on the far side over there pull those three guys out and this uh, trim piece should come off. And once we do that, we'll have some wiggle room to move some wires and stuff. So we'll be back in a second. All right, floor mats out. Um, we've got that little trim for the round the circle that he's out. We're getting ready to pull this uh, bottom trim out. If it comes out easy, don't know. Uh, a little tugging, I think. So, he's having fun with this green body piece, but he should come out. So maybe I need to pull out a different angle. 
So I'm going to tug on him and I will get him re removed. All right. So this piece here, we got him out. He's got all these things like this in there. And I think they kind of hold on to the green part a little bit. So what I did was I just basically pulled up on here, flex him a little bit, flex from the bottom, and eventually I was able to work it loose. So the three bolts on the bottom are the only thing holding it in place, that and all these dang clip looking things. So he's out of the way. You can see we now got room to run wires and stuff. So let's get at it. All right, some more fun we're gonna have here. So on the dashboard itself, below the steering column here, you'll see there's one screw there, and on the passenger side, to the right of all these warnings and stuff, there's a guy right there, uh, just below my orange screwdriver. So those are uh, T30s. Up here on top, above where the uh, light switch is and the uh, key goes, you'll see there's a little like a T15 right there. So we need to remove those three guys, and then we can pull this part of the dashboard. Um, the voltmeter, I'm probably going to put them somewhere right here because, you know, we don't have room over here. And you got the thing, and you got the, you know, switch, you know, for the key right there. And, of course, that's what the headlights are. So let's go ahead and put them right in this area. So we're going to be drilling the hole in just a minute. But let's pop this guy off first. All right. So now that I um, got those three screws and stuff out, I should be able to work this guy out and get him dropped down there. So... We're gonna have fun here to say the least. Um, all right, here's part of the dashboard hanging there. I used a two and an eighth inch hole saw to cut that hole there. Um, this is some sort of a voltage warning thing that wasn't even hooked up. And um, so I had room over here to put this. So this is where we're gonna go ahead and put the um, voltmeter thing. All right, in this bag here, we got a couple of nuts and we have this bracket, which will go across the back of the uh, voltmeter here. And that's what's gonna help uh, support this. And then once we have that done, then we'll hook up the, um, the different wires to the back there. This is your old voltage indicator. And you see it was never hooked up or maybe the mouse disconnected it for you. But this is the new one we're putting in. See, that's a pretty side. We used hey. it, we used a two and an eighth inch hole saw to cut a hole. This old bracket holds in place. I just need to tighten these up. And then we have some um, wires. One wire goes there, one wire goes there, and then we're done with that. Then I have um, another set of electrical work I gotta do to get 12 volts to the ignition key area, right? So um, we'll get it all hooked up and it'll look pretty. This is one end of the 48 volt to 12 volt reduction area. This is gonna go into the uh, reduction uh, hardware and then these parts, you know, go into your accessories and stuff, positive and minus. The other side, this is quite long, we run through this area. It's going to go up in the back of the dashboard. It's your orange wire. It comes with a little um, um, round terminal on it for a screw, but I didn't find that useful, so I cut it off. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to the blue wire that's on your ignition switch. This is your ignition switch right here. And this is what's going to give it 12 volts. So you can either get a stacker spade that you can then plug two things into. I wasn't that smart. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is splice these bad boys in. So since um, I've got this guy here, a little package of a 12 to 10 aug. Uh, spade. This is male and females in there. I'm going to use a female, which will go on to this male right there. Go ahead and take these two bad boys here. Screw them there. So this is the blue that I unhooked. This is the new orange line. Getting them twisted. We're going to put that bad boy on there. Get them up in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and crimp them. Ah, uh, they say 12 to 10. Use the third one down or whatever. So we can do that. But I don't know if it's gonna work. Got a good crimp there where the wires are. <coughs> and 
I'm going to get another one down here. All right, now let's take it off. And we got a little click. So we're going to go ahead and put the dashboard back together. Okay, the dashboard's back on. Yay! All right, this is the new uh, charging uh, hole or receptacle for the eco battery. This one just takes a standard three prong um, extension cord. Unlike the old one where your charger was external and you had to plug a special um, socket in here, this just takes an extension cord. There's three screws holding this old one in and then um, I'll show you in a minute how we're gonna disconnect the wiring. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this guy back in, as you can imagine. That has something leaking off of it, like I don't know battery acid or something. Right, right now, those old batteries were nasty. That's all I got to say. They were really nasty, so I don't know. Um, fun than I thought. It's all in there. Gonna film maybe. All right, we got all the trim work back on here. You can see you got the two bolts, screws, whatever, on this side. The mat's in. Um, this guy here looks like he tucks in a little bit there. Not the best fitting thing, but I'm sure if, with a screwdriver, I'll give him to fit a little better. He fits better on the other side. Last thing I gotta do here is I'm just putting this little ring guy on. Okay, that's how it looks without the ring on the outside. It's got those two little tab-looking things. It lays in like that. And it seemed like it snapped in place. Yay! That's good. So, I'm now done with the front here. So we got the external ring there. Yay. We're done with the front now. We got that screw put in. And that screw put back in. So now we get to play with this fun now because the new receptacle goes to the new charging system you know it has this little wiring system it's going to go into a thing the old one which is this can come out so you have two choices you can change the wiring back into there somewhere and pull the wires out from here or you can do what I'm gonna do which is just chase it back somewhere in the middle here cut them and terminate them so you can get different thing ways to terminate them um, I'm just gonna use some electrical tape and uh, deal with it and then we can throw all this then we can throw this whole thing apart so let's get going all right Here's the old uh, plastic here, and you can kind of see, here's the old um, receptacle. There's the three wires, they're all connected to it. So, just in case you like to see cutting the wires. There goes the blue, red, and there goes the black. Done. At this point, Trash. This guy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these three wires here. We're gonna take three wires we just cut. We're gonna put some tape on them and get them all, you know, protected, obviously. Then I'll just shove it back in here. And um, I'll probably cut off some of this. I don't need all this, but I do want to protect it a little bit in here. So we'll do that next. All right, there's the uh, 48 volt to a 12 volt reducer. It's got a set of wires coming out here. Um, 
kind of a tangled mess here. So we've got um, a lot of fun stuff here. We've got the um, output, which is going to be your 12 volts, these uh, black and red ones that have no uh, connectors on them. And the input, which is going to be the 48 volts from the battery, will be the black and the yellow. So the yellow is going to go on the positive side, the black will go on the negative side. That's simple. Down here is a connector I already hooked up. Comes out of the um, converter. Goes this little adapter here. And you can see there's an additional wire there. There's an orange one in there. And that orange one is the long one that we ran to the uh, key. That's what's going to help turn your uh, 12 volt stuff on. So when you turn the key on, you'll have lights. And if you turn the key off, then you have no headlights. So that's the whole idea behind us hooking that up where the uh, key switch is. So um, right now, all we got to do is hook things up, right? So this connector right here, this black wire that's got this yellow here, that is most likely the negative for the um, headlights. And if you just unhook them, we can, um, I'm going to put a different connector on this guy. And then I can hook this to the uh, black for our um, 12 volts out on this uh, converter thing. And then that guy, we'll just, the, this FEMA one, we'll just leave him unhooked up to anything. The battery charger over here has a few important wires, right? It's got this black and red, positive and negative. Um, you'll see that coming off the uh, receptacle, this is since it's the back facing of it, right? Um, it's got this connector and then that goes straight into the uh, battery charger there. So, and then it's gonna create uh, 48 volts or 51 volts or whatever kicking out and that's what's gonna go to the battery. So right now all I gotta do is uh, change out the one little connector on that yellow uh, bullet and um, I'll get that hooked up to the uh, 12 volt reducer thingy and then at that point we're getting busy here, right? For the battery, both the uh, positive and negative, this is the negative and that's the positive on the left, you are to install the most amp drawing wire closest to the battery, which means the controller will be the closest to this. In the middle will be your battery charger and last on the closest to the nut end or whatever you want to call it, the bolt head will be the 12 volt, 48 volt reducer. If you have any other accessories that don't draw much amps, they would be further away from the battery. When you have that putting on the bolt, you put the least on first, such as the 12 volt reducer, the battery charger would be in the middle, and the last to put on the bolt would be the controller. And then when you insert that into the battery, it's obviously reversed. All right, at some point, uh, you should test the battery. So it comes shipped with it in off position. So you turn it on and it goes green. That means it's working, right? And then turn it back off and complete your install. Here's a connection from for the CAN connectors uh, that goes to the uh, battery. On that wire, it's got some of these. And also for the uh, battery charger here. Apparently, it has to work or else it ain't gonna work, right? That sound right. You have to have this thing connected or else the battery charger won't work. The battery charger might fire for one, two seconds and die. Um, there was nothing in my documentation that said you had to do this, uh, but a few people online mentioned it and they were 100% right. Shot of the one wire not being used that comes off of the battery. And here's a shot from the uh, battery charger of the connector that I'm not using. This connection in the middle um, is the communication port. This wire is what you screw into it.
This wire does a few things. One, it has a connector here that ends up going to your battery charger. And that way the battery can talk to the battery charger and figure out what needs to go on, right? But also, same wire splits off and backtracks around, cable management issues. And eventually it goes under the seat and ends up with the, the communication port wire connects to the sock on the back of it. There's an eight pin connector and a four pin connector. It's not easy or hard to mess that up. It's pretty easy. And that's all it takes to hook that guy up. It measures amps in or out of the battery, discharge or charging, the volts, and the state of charge in percent. Usually you'll be low if the battery's old and it takes a charge to bring the battery up to 100% and recalibrate the uh, state of charge meter. We've charged it and taken on several rides since it's uh, been installed. So um, thank you for watching. As you can see, we're moving again. Yay! It can flash out for a little straw. Well, Flash is doing the strong one. <laughs> yeah, we're just watching him do all the hard work, right? Yeah, he's doing the work. Uh, look at the sunset. Sunset. God, the killer deer aren't out yet. I haven't seen the deer. Yet. It rained a lot earlier today. Maybe they're still in hiding. Yeah, maybe.